age of eight, my parents packed up our Ford F-150 and we moved out to a small town called Seward, Nebraska. The one thing I remember the most about growing up in the countryside was the corn. My cousins and I used to run up and down the rows of corn stalks that seemed to go on forever. As I grew older, it always surprised me to hear news reports of children going hungry at night. I was surprised because I have seen the huge amounts of food being grown nearly year round. So surely there should be enough to feed the world, right? Well, maybe these thoughts were as a result of never truly letting go of my childhood imagination. Or perhaps it's because I wasn't wrong after all. Come to find out world hunger and the multitude of environmental problems our planet faces share a common instigator, animal agriculture. This is the leading cause of everything. Climate change, deforestation, species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, obesity, heart disease. It's time to meet the truth. No pun intended. Here are some of the fast facts of the agriculture industry. Now, which of these would you imagine produces the most greenhouse gas emissions? Well, you might be surprised. According to a new study by the World Watch Institute, animal agriculture is responsible for a whopping 51% of greenhouse gas emissions. That is more than all of the combined emissions from transportation. And these emissions are projected to increase to nearly 80% by 2050. And not only do we have to consider climate change, now we have to worry about how animal agriculture hogs our fresh water. As reported by food geographer George Borsham, it takes 2,500 gallons of water just to produce one pound of beef and 1,000 gallons of water to produce just one gallon of milk. This is the equivalent to more than 50 bathtubs full of water. Whereas, it only takes 25 gallons of water to produce one pound of wheat. This is equal to less than one bathtub of water. And now we have to consider how animal agriculture is also the leading cause of water pollution. The Academy, the Project, the Academy of Protection estimates that now we are seeing the seven million pounds of poop that are produced worldwide every minute by animals raised for livestock in the US has to go somewhere. So it is stored in large open air lagoons that turn Pepto-Bismol pink from the colonizing bacteria. This eventually leaks into our groundwater, contaminating it with livestock related fecal bacteria such as E. coli. Not only this, but animal agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation. The National Institute of Amazonian Research has determined that nearly seven football fields worth of land are bulldozed worldwide every minute to create more room for farmed animals. This is causing species to disappear. The UN is estimating an up is estimating up to 100 plant and animal species that are disappearing every day. And while we're dining on our mass-produced, genetically modified, hormone-injected meat, eggs, and fish, there's an estimated one in nine suffering from chronic undernourishment. The World Bank currently found that 82% of starving children live in countries where the food is fed to the animals and the animals are eaten by Western countries. A professor of ecology, David Pimentel, found that if all the grain currently fed to livestock were fed directly to the people, the number of people who could be fed would be nearly 800 million. That means we could feed every single one of the hungry. What was most disturbing for me was learning about the abuse and cruelty that goes on in this industry. These animals are looked at as its, things, not as valuable beings that can think, play, 
and form relationships, just as our dogs and cats do. Now, before I move on to the next section of my talk, viewer discretion is advised. The following images may be disturbing to some audiences. These animals grow up in cramped spaces. They walk and sleep in their own feces. They live in decrepit conditions without any kind of adequate care. And babies are not spared from this horror. One day old male chicks are ground up alive because they are considered as not useful to the industry. And baby pigs and calves are torn from their mother's side immediately after birth. How could this not concern you? When I learned all this, I was concerned. But I thought to myself, how could I possibly solve all these problems propagated by the animal agriculture industry? One word, veganism. A vegan does not eat any animal products, such as meat, dairy, eggs, or fish. A vegan also tries to abstain from using products made from or that have been tested on animals. Every day, a vegan who eats a vegan diet saves 1,100 gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain, 30 square feet of forest land, and 20 pounds CO2 equivalent, and one animal's life every day. These benefits are outstanding, but that's not all. Now, I know most of you are probably wondering, how could you live without bacon? But the real question is, how could I not? <laughs> killing animals is killing us. It is illogical and unethical to breed billions of living beings, cause them suffering, and then slaughter them just to create a product that is bad for human health. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics states that vegans enjoy lower rates of heart disease, lower rates of type 2 diabetes, lower mass indexes, and lower rates of overall cancer rates. And now, of course, you're probably wondering, yeah, yeah, but what about your protein? Where do you get it? And don't you need to drink milk to have strong bones? Well, turns out there are tons of plant-based sources of protein, such as kale, lentils, beans, nuts, even tomatoes, have way more protein per calorie than in meat. And the Dairy Council tells us you need to drink milk to have strong bones, when, in fact, there's no evidence to support that this is even true. I mean, if you think about it, the human body has no more need for cow's milk than it does for dog's milk, horse's milk, or giraffe's milk. In fact, hip fracture rates and indicator of osteoporosis are actually highest in countries with the highest intakes of meat and dairy products. And if all this hasn't convinced you yet, then I can give you my personal testimony of being vegan for four years now, and I feel stronger than ever. And I think others would agree. Bodybuilders, actors, parents, and teenagers like me are all recognizing the benefits of a vegan lifestyle. And no, we don't just eat tofu and salads every day. Here is a little bit of what I eat on an average day. Now, you can't tell me that this doesn't look delicious. Now that I have empowered you with this information, it's up to you to choose what you would do with it. As our world population continues to grow, I think it is now more important than ever to change societal norms. So I challenge you to take the 30-day vegan challenge, starting right now. That means 30 days of no animal products. Don't be a coward, just try it. Together, we can make a difference and shape a better future. It is up to us to end the leading cause of everything.